Welcome back to Quantitative Analysis in Anthropology. I'm Professor Peregrine, and in this lesson, we're going to talk about R and R Studio and how to install and begin the process of using them. So, to begin with, I want to talk a little bit about R itself. R is a powerful statistics package that is open source, meaning that the underlying code from which the program runs is open to the public and researchers to program, and it's free. Uh, because it's both open source and free, it has become a very widely used program, and again, for that reason, there is now an enormous library of add-on packages for R. Many of those are very specific to particular kinds of analyses, to particular disciplines, and there are some very specific to anthropology. We will be using some of those. Your textbook has some packages that it uses, and you will find in, in other places, if you're looking at um, workbooks for R or help documents, that there's a lot of packages uh, that are used pretty broadly that comes from R being open source, that these can be program and because of that and because it's free R has become really the standard statistical package in the social sciences and, and really in the sciences in general um, so it's a very useful statistical package to learn uh, it's used as I said widely and so when by learning it it will give you skills that will be extremely important and useful to you there is a drawback to R, and it is a major drawback, and that is that R is based on what is called command line processing. You'll see this uh, after we install it. Uh, I'll show you some of this, but command line processing means that you have to physically type in commands that you want the program to do. It's completely different from a menu-driven program, which is what you are used to, in which you have a menu, you click it, there's a drop down, you click on something there, and the program does something. In R, it's very old school. This is back like when I started learning to use computers. You have to type in all those commands. And that's uh, time consuming to begin with. Once you learn it, my experience is that students have really come to like it. All right, so I'm going to go over to the computer now and I'm going to show you how to download and install R and give you a little sense of how it works. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to download and install R. This is on Windows computer. <coughs> you may um, be using a Mac computer, and if you are, I'm sorry about that, but I can't help you too much with the Macs. But anyway, I'm going to start off in Google. You can um, use something else if you want to, and I'm going to just type in CRAN R, and CRAN R is the site that hosts the comprehensive our network archive, see, CRAN. Um, and this is where all of the R material can be found. We'll go there. This is the opening page. And along the left are going to be things you may want to use later. We'll talk about them, particularly manuals and packages. But for right now, what we're interested in is this, download and install R. There are different versions of R for Linux, for Macs, and for Windows. And as I said, if you are a Mac user, I can't help you, but I can show you how this is done for Windows. And it should be quite similar for Macs. All right, we're going to install just the base program. There are programs for contributors and for builders of R. We're just gonna install the base. And here it is. And we are downloading it fairly quickly. It's not that large of a program. As we're waiting, I can tell you a little bit about 
R. Um, it is a programming language that has been adapted for the use uh, for, for this particular program. And here we are, we can open this and we will get a little install thingy. And it's on another page. I'm gonna move this over here. There we go. Uh, I wanna install it in English. Gonna move this over again. Uh, this is the license. I'm going to install it in that location. Uh, please specify, do you want to customize? No, I do not. And I do want to create a desktop shortcut. That's simple. Uh, it's a very small program and runs very efficiently. It's one of the reasons people love it. Uh, it doesn't take a lot of memory to run. It doesn't take a lot of disk space. Um, you can add a lot of things to it, packages, as we'll talk about. Uh, you can program for it if you have uh, things that you want to do that it can't do. Uh, you need to learn the R language to be able to do that. But if you know anything about programming, it isn't all that difficult. And as you can see, the install is pretty quick and easy. So we are done with that. And I am going to go over to my desktop and show you R. To do that first, I am going to stop this. I will restart it in just a minute. OK, so I hope you've successfully installed R. There should be a little icon on your desktop if you ask for one to be there. If not, you'll have to go into your um, file manager um, and uh, go find where R was installed and double click the execute file, but let's hope you put an icon on your desktop because that you just double click and this is what you get. So I, I want to just point out, this is version 4.0.3, Bunny Wunnies Freak Out. Yours might be a different version depending on when you downloaded it, but all of them have these funny names. Uh, anyway, this is the main console for R. I'm going to show you how to install another program called RStudio, which um, is kind of a, a front for R that is a little easier to use. Um, I really like students to use the R console because I think it's the best way to learn the program. RStudio has some issues with it for me in terms of having sort of too many windows going on. Uh, once you know R well, it works great, but I am going to be using mostly the, the R console in the lessons in this class. Um, and I'm going to hope that students will use it on the exercises that I provide. Okay, R is a completely um, what's called a line editing or a, a command line program. Uh, it does not use Windows or drop-down menus. What you see up here uh, are just some basic things that really don't do much in terms of, of doing the kinds of statistics we're going to be doing. All of that you type into a command line here, either in this program or in our studio. And so I'm going to just show you this a little bit by starting off and I'm going to create a file called Boaz. And that is Franz Boaz, father of American anthropology. We're going to talk about Boaz and other anthropologists in this course. I'm going to create that file. And this little arrow says, I am going to create Boaz by reading a table. And these are commands built into R. You will be learning these. Um, normally, I would type in the name of the file that that I'm reading, but here I'm going to do a little cheat command because that's going to bring up the file explorer at some point. There we go. And 
I am going to go down here to a file that's called immigrants and I'm going to open that. Okay, that's been read and opened. All right, this file is, attach it and you'll learn why I do that too. This file is data from Franz Boas's study of immigrants to the United States. And we'll again be talking about these things. It's one of the most uh, important studies in American anthropology. It put the final nails in the coffin of race theory. Uh, we'll talk about that also. Many of the statistics you are going to learn uh, were actually invented or developed by anthropologists. Uh, Francis Galton, Carl Pearson, uh, R.A. Fisher were all anthropologists, physical anthropologists and geneticists who were working on eugenics. And uh, that was an attempt to breed superhumans. Yes, it's exactly what I said. And we will be talking about this later. Uh, Boaz did this study of immigrants to show that many of the ideas that underlie uh, the, the race theory uh, that they were proposing did not work. But again, we'll talk about that later. All right, here's a summary of what is in this data file. And what these are are variables. We're gonna be talking about this uh, in the first couple of lessons. ID for each individual, the group each individual is in, their gender, the year they immigrated, their age, their stature, and then these are issues having to do with characteristics that are supposedly or were, were said to be racial characteristics. Uh, they are not, were not, and Boaz showed that they were not. And if we just want to look at these, oh, we can look at this. Here's a, what's called a histogram of age showing how many uh, people in each age group in this group of about 14,000 immigrants. And interestingly, there is, if you look here, this is under 20, there's a group of young people and then a group of older people. Um, anyway, this is what we're going to be looking at. This is R and that is a brief introduction to R. Um, there is an exercise that goes along with this that I hope you will do. And um, it'll show you a little bit again about R, how to launch it and how to go about using it in a very basic way. All right, that's all for Okay, me. hope that went well for you, that you got all uh, R installed fine, that it's running. And now we're gonna move on to R Studio. R Studio is a interface and interface for R. Um, it's also used very widely. A lot of textbooks use it. A lot of help books and uh, help documents uh, use R Studio. In this class and for the lessons that I have, I am not going to be using R Studio. I'm going to be using the Direct R interface, but you may find R Studio very useful to you. You can use it for the exercises or the projects, that's fine. One of the things that's nice about our studio is that it has integrated help and debugging. Um, you will find that as you type out these commands on the command line, there will be errors. And figuring out those errors can sometimes be very difficult. Our studio helps, to, helps you to do that. Uh, and so that a lot of students like that about our studio. Our studio also has uh, the ability to create what are called R Markdown documents. One of the great strengths about R is that it produces beautiful graphics. And what uh, our studio helps is to create documents using those graphics and, and do many other things. It has lots of functionality that goes beyond the regular R console. So I wanna show you how to install R Studio and getting, get it running. So like with R, I'm gonna go over to the computer console now, show you how to get uh, R Studio downloaded and installed and running. 
Okay, so now I'll show you how to install R Studio. Again, go to you to Google or whatever search engine you like to use, and now we're going to type in R Studio. And what should come up is R Studio open source and professional software. Now R Studio is a both free and uh, a software that you can buy. So it's not quite as direct as downloading R, but the products they have, open source ones, are R Studio is what you want. So we'll click on that. Here we have R Studio, and we want to download R Studio Desktop. We click on that, and we get some information about why we would want to pay a thousand dollars a year to get our studio desktop pro but we're not going to do that we're going to download our studio desktop and once again they would like to encourage us to pay a thousand dollars for this but we're just going to download the free version okay download our studio for windows there's also a mac version uh there are other versions but we'll go to download our studio for windows and the download should begin um, we started up the same way execute the file and it will install now i've already done that and i am going to close this out because the install for our studio is longer it'll take three to five minutes, and I don't want to do that in this little exercise. So I've already installed it. Um, I've created a, an icon on the desktop. There is not a choice to do that in the installation of our studio. So you need to go and either run it from the, the file where, it, where it's located or from the start menu in Windows um, or create a desktop icon for it. So we'll start that up. And I'm going to need to pull it over here. Uh, so here is our studio. You might notice that this looks just like the R console that we saw before in the base version of R. And in fact, it is. Uh, R studio has these other windows uh, that we will learn something about how to use. There is this very nice learner package uh, and some tutorials that might be helpful for you. Um, but in general, our studio works a lot like the regular console in R does. As you learn more about R, R studio and the windows it has does help you to do some things. And I'll show you one thing that it does help you to do. Again, I'm gonna Now, notice this, I'm going to do read table. It is showing me some choices that we have. So if you know something about the command you want to use, it does prompt you for what you want to do and give you here, this will become obvious later on, give you the, the, things, that, the, the, the things that can be added to this command um, as you try, as you go ahead to execute it. I'm going to do the same thing. So again, we've got the choice here, file choose. It tells us what we want to do. You might also notice that, see this little blue thing? That, as we learn more about um, our studio, it helps tell us that the syntax is correct, that, that we've got everything here. If I add another parentheses, it's not showing up over here and it'll say, wait a minute, you don't have a closed parentheses there because you don't have that little blue box. Um, so this will again open up just like the last time uh, or the, R, the regular R console, a menu and we go there and we load in immigrants and now we have here 
gives you the little commands attach OAS. Oop, can't spell. Gives us the little help here that I've got a close quote. And then we'll look at Boaz and the same variables are there. If I want to do this, I can do histogram age and we are not getting anything. Why is that? Oh, because I'm not there. There we go. And here in a new window is the histogram that we saw before of age. So very similar to the console. And again, I, I like just using the console directly. Um, there are some very nice things about our studio we'll learn about uh, as we go through the course. And so that's all I've got for you now. Okay. Well, I hope that went well, that you got our studio going and that now you're all ready to move forward and start with the R exercises. There is a simple introduction to R that um, gives you sort of the basic tools to start up R, to load in some data, to do a little bit of analysis. And then you can start off on the regular exercises uh, for this course. And in the next lesson, we'll be starting the course talking about levels of measurement. We'll see you then.